Uh, good evening again. Uh, I'm a very strict follower of Brahmanism, but uh, I mean, I really like a lot of aspects in Islam, but is it necessary for me to convert into Islam to follow certain rules or, you know, following my own Brahmin religion and then go ahead with the certain aspects which I really like about Islam? I've seen a lot of lectures of you, sir, like uh, the similarities between Islam and Hinduism and various other lectures, but I really like your talks a lot. Sister asked a very good question. She said that she is a strict follower of Brahmanism, but she likes many aspects of Islam. She's asking that can she follow these aspects of Islam and yet follow Brahmanism? She has seen many of my talks and she appreciates my talks. Sister, first let me tell you that Islam or becoming a Muslim is not a label. Islam by definition means peace acquired by submitting a will to Almighty God. So any human being who submits his or her will to Almighty God, he or she is called as a Muslim. Just by label Muhammad, Zakir, Abdullah, Sultan, Shakir, that doesn't mean you become a Muslim or Fatima, Aisha, that doesn't make you a Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits the will to Almighty God. So first you have to find out what is the commandment of Almighty God. The sister said that she's a strict follower of Brahmanism and she likes many aspects of Islam and she has seen many of my tapes, my lectures, including similarities with Islam and Hinduism. If you have seen these sister, then my answer would be easier. It will be easier for you to understand. If you have seen my cassette similarities between Islam and Hinduism, the talk which I gave, I think in the first peace conference in Chennai, similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Sister, if we analyze, even if you read the Hindu scriptures, Hindu scriptures too say that you have to submit your will to Almighty God. But as I told you by the passage of time, all the previous scriptures, they have not been maintained in the pure form. There have been interpolations, there have been fabrications, there has been corruption. Most of the scholars of all these religions, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Judaism, they agree that the scripture has not been maintained in the pure form. And if you have heard my tapes, I told you initially, Mahabharat was a story told by the grandfather of Arjun. It contained 8,000 shlokas. Then, you know, it kept on going down the ages. It became 24,000 shlokas. Now there are more than 100,000 verses. 100,000 shlokas. Who says this? The scholars of Mahabharata. So by the passage of time, there has been interpolation, there has been corruption. But all these scriptures, in spite of being changed, yet they do contain the remnants of the word of Almighty God. And the basic of all the religion, if you have heard my talks, is that Almighty God is one. He has got no idols. He has got no photograph. And all the religions preach that Almighty God is one. And if you have heard my talk, I've said in many places, Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, Ikka Mevidityam, God is only one without a second. And in Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19, and Yajurved, chapter number 32, verse number three, it says, Na tasya pratima asti. Of that God, there is no pratima. There is no image. Pratima means image, photograph, painting, picture, sculpture, statue, idol. Of that God, there is no pratima, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no picture, there is no sculpture, there is no statue, there is no idol. So all the scriptures stress on the oneness of Almighty God. And the Brahma Sutra of Hinduism is Ekkam Brahm Dyote Naste, Nena Naste Kinchan. Bhagwan Eki hai, Dusra Nahi hai, Nahi hai, Nahi hai, Zara bhi Nahi hai. There is only one God, not a second one, not at all, not at all, not in the least bit. Now coming to your major question, that can you be a strict Brahmin and yet follow teachings of Islam? Sister, by being a normal Brahmin and trying to become a Muslim is difficult. But if you are a strict Brahmin, strictly following the Vedas, then you have no option but to submit your will to God. If you are an average Brahmin who may be following something and not following the other thing, etc., then it's difficult for you to submit your will to God. But if you are a strict Brahmin, strictly following the Vedas, 
you have to follow what I mentioned earlier, the three verses I quoted, that you have to believe in one God. You have to do no idol worship. You have to believe that God is one. He has no image. He has got no photograph. He has got no statue. And if you read your scriptures, your scriptures mention about the coming of the last and final messenger prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And if you have seen my talk on similarity in Islam and Hinduism, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the Hindu scriptures, I have mentioned in detail that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned in your scripture. So if you are a strict Brahmin, you have no option but to believe there is one God, he has got no images, he has got no idols, and you also have to believe that Almighty God's last messenger, final avatar, kalki avatar is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But when your scriptures say you have to follow the kalki avatar and follow the last and final messenger, so when you read the teachings of this messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you'll find that it is matching with many things what is mentioned in your scriptures. But at the same time, it may contradict with many things mentioned in your scriptures. Now what we consider the Quran is the last and final revelation of Almighty God, which was revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This Quran is the Furqan. It is the criteria to judge right from wrong. So whatever matches with the Quran, if it's mentioned in the Bible, or in the Veda, or in the Mahabharat, or in the Ramayana, you can be sure it is according to the will and the commandment of Almighty God. If it contradicts, then you have to agree this is against the wish and the commandment of Almighty God. So if you are a truly strict Brahmin, following Brahminism, you have to believe in one God, you have to go against idol worship. And if you heard my talk on similarity with Islam and Hinduism, if you follow at least those things which are mentioned in my talk, leave aside the other things, at least those things, and stop everything else, yet I feel that inshallah, inshallah, it will be sufficient to transform you to Jannah, inshallah. So if you have heard my talk on similarity with Islam and Hinduism, talking about oneness of Almighty God, talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how Salah should be offered by prostrating, should not have alcohol, should not have pork, which is mentioned in your scripture as well as the Quran. It's mentioned about modesty in your Vedas, that the lady should be covered. It's mentioned in the Quran. So all these things what are mentioned in my lecture. There are many other things, but even if you follow these things strictly, sister, then inshallah, inshallah, it will be sufficient for you to at least pass this test in this examination. If you want, you can follow many more things, but at least these things, the major things which I mentioned, but whatever contradicts in your scripture, you should not follow, because your scholars say it has changed by the passage of time. You have to realize that these things are interpolations, are concoctions, are fabrications. So what is matching if you follow sister, inshallah, inshallah, you can be a very good practicing Brahman, following what is mentioned in your scripture, which is matching with the Furqan, the Quran, and inshallah can be a practicing Muslim also. So I hope inshallah that Almighty Allah gives you hidayah, sister. Sister, do you agree with whatever I mentioned in my lecture on similarities between Islam and Hinduism, sister? Yes, sir. Very well. Sister, do you agree with what I mentioned in my talk? Yes, sir. Do you agree to follow those things? Yes, yes, I do. So if you agree to follow those things which I have mentioned, so practically, you have submitted your will to God. You know, in Arabic, we may say Muslim. In English, we may say a person who submitted will to God. So if you agree with what I mentioned in the scripture, that there's no God but one God alone should be worshipped, idol worship is wrong. If you agree the last and final messenger, the Kalkiya Uttar is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and agree with his teaching, then according to me, if I have to say in Arabic, I will say you're following the religion of Islam, and I say there are a Muslim. So sister, do you agree with that? Yes, sir, I do. So do you want to, do you want to proclaim in public that, you know, in the Arabic way, that you're a Muslim? Sister, would you like to proclaim in the Arabic fashion? You know, since you say you agree that there's one God, and you agree that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger, so would you like to proclaim that you are a Muslim? I mean, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a Muslim, but... Uh... Yeah, I do accept whatever you say. So if you agree that there is one God and yeah. he doesn't have any idols or image and he alone deserves worship, 
And if you agree that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the messenger of God, these two are sufficient to let you enter the fold of Islam. You know, pass. Other thing, practicing will come later on. So if you agree there is one God who has got no image and you disagree with idol worship and you agree Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger, then you can enter this college, inshallah, this institute, or the way of life is the right word. And then, inshallah, as the practice keeps on improving, so would you like to enter this way of life, sister? Uh, God willing. Yes, that, inshallah. Yeah. Mashallah. So, sister, again, I'd like to ask you officially that do you agree there's one God, sister? Yes, I do. Do you agree that no one else deserves to be worshipped but that Almighty God? Okay. Do you agree that idol worship is wrong? Um, not fully, but yeah, partly. No. See, is it fully or partly? You can't say that, you know, I want to eat the cake and have the cake. Either idol worship is right or it is wrong, means you can pray to God, but don't have to go through an idol, you don't have to worship an idol. Do you believe that God has got no image? Yeah. Yes, you believe that. That's it. So you believe God has got no statue? Yeah. Good. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger? Uh, I've not actually gone till that extent, but uh, the rest of the things which you said, I would accept with that, but I really don't know about the latest no, Do you believe that he's the messenger of Almighty God? Yes, I do. You believe he's the messenger of Almighty God? Yeah. Fine, everything practices being a perfect Muslim, no one is perfect. We strive. So, sister, if I say in Arabic, would you like to say the Shahada? Would you like to say the Shahada, that is the proclamation in Arabic? The same thing what I mentioned, that there's no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Would you like to say in Arabic? Yes, sir, sure. Okay, fine. So, I'll just say in Arabic and repeat it. And again, I'll give you the translation. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad is is the messenger. The messenger and servant of Allah. And messenger and servant of Allah. Mashallah, sister. Thank you. Now you're a Muslim, and I pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to guide you, and I request that Inshallah, all the brothers and sisters, that whenever a person accepts Islam, you can support her in terms of knowledge, in terms of social things. Sister, I request you that. Please, inshallah, read the Quran with translation, even if it's earlier, and implement on the guidelines. And inshallah, you'll be a good practicing human being who's submitting evil to Almighty God. And do pray for others, sister.